All right, here we go. Now, remember, what I want to do now is um, I want to go through any questions that you have basically on uh, the odds through 25. All right, and remember, not that it's a big deal, and I know you don't want to, but if you ever need it, you, it's posted online. You can hear the explanation, all right? But let's go specifically. Mr. Hunt, which one? All right, so we're going to first start with number 25, guys. And what I'm going to do is this is partly my fault because I don't think there was a proportion on the right side. So everybody take a look at 25, all right? And what I would like to do is I'd like to show you that this is a proportion, all right? So how do you solve a proportion? We always used to say last year that we do what? We cross multiply, all right? That's the rule. Now, what I want to do is I really want to kind of show, I want to show you why we cross multiply, all right? Um, because it, at first it seems a little awkward that why does cross multiplying work? All right, so let me show you what they figured out. All right, so now here's just for a better understanding. So I just like your eyes up on the board so you can see, all right, what they figured out or what they realized, how to solve a proportion. All right, look. One half is what fraction? Somebody give me one half is equivalent to one. Two fourths, somebody said. Beautiful. All right. So those two fractions are equal, correct? Now, since we know they're equal, one guy goes, wow, look how cool that is. If you cross multiply, two times two is what? Four. And then you cross multiply the other direction, one times four is what? So anytime you have a proportion to solve it, you can just multiply the numerator and the denominator together of one fraction and a numerator and a denominator of the other fraction, and you always create two equal things. Yes? And it doesn't matter which side. No, and it doesn't matter, right? because one times four can go here or one times four can go there. It doesn't matter because they are equal. It doesn't matter because they are equal, all right? So now, did that make sense now? Yes. All right, now, again, I'm trying to emphasize to kids, most of the time the mistake is made when you there's a negative involved, all right? So just be careful with that. Max, do I need to do anything else there? You're good? Yes. All right, come on now. I'm taking my time, all right? Anybody have any questions with that? Anybody have any questions? Any questions? Nothing? All right, that's excellent. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna flip over and we're gonna knock out the evens. Or right, we're gonna knock out the evens. I actually did have a question, I'm very sorry. I, I tried to, I started talking. Yeah, no problem at all, but you don't have to be sorry. I know it's hard. Communication is hard online. Just speak up. Tell me. I had more issues with the ones where there was an X on both sides. Could you try and do number 21? All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up 21. And then I'm going to blow up on the board here. And then I'm going to ask you if you see what I did. All right. Now, first thing we did is we distributed a negative 3, correct? Yes. And do you understand negative 12x minus 18? Yeah, because that's just, yes. So now you have variables on both sides. I'm always trying to tell kids it's easier to keep the variable positive. So this time I move the negative 12x to the right side and I move the 78 to the left side because that will keep the variable positive. You see that note there? Jack? Yeah. Um, yeah, I do. Now, if you just move the variable to the left and the number to the right, all that's going to do is make it negative 20x equals 96, which will be the same answer. You hear me on this? Yeah, I was just making sure I had the right answer. I did. I was, it's, but these ones are trickier, I think. Yes, they are. All right, they are. 
Okay, and so tonight, right after class, I'm gonna post the solutions. I want you to check your work, all right? So here we go, let's get started now. Let's get this over with. All right, let's everybody take a look at number 28. Is that the first even? Yeah. All right, so for question number 28, first thing we're gonna do is get rid of this plus 12. By what? Subtracting 12. Now I want everybody to look at this and just write negative x is equal to negative 14. That's what I'd like for you to be able to say. If you need to put minus 12, minus 12, feel free. All right, if you have to do that. All right, but it's not necessary. We've done a whole bunch of problems. All right, now, what does the negative mean? Change the sign, that's what it means. It means change the sign. So in this case, x equals 14. All right, now don't forget, there's kind of like a negative one there. So a lot of kids come over here and they just divide by negative one, all right? That's the, act, the mathematical explanation. But I always tell kids whenever the variable is negative, that just means to switch the signs. That's what that means, switch the sign. Okay, how many times are we gonna do a fraction? All right, always undo a fraction is what? Multiply by the reciprocal. Now do me a favor. If you want, you can squeeze negative 9 fourths over here, but is that necessary? No, because we know how to do it now. So leave that alone. Just put the reciprocal over here as negative 9 fourths. Now, if you want, you can say, well, because of that, I know that these cancel. So x is equal to, now, negative times a negative is a positive. I always try to tell kids you should divide first. 16 divided by four, four times nine, 36. There you have it. All right, now again, personally, I, I really feel like you should give yourself a check. If you got it right, if you made a little mistake, you should correct it and then make yourself a note. All right, that's what I'm thinking. Okay, so let's go to 31. All right, now we have fractions again. I gotta move the 3 fifth over. So the answer is x is equal to whatever 1 half minus 3 fifths. Come on now, let's not have trouble with fractions. All right, common denominator is what? 10, I, I'm hoping you do the fraction like this, 10 Create one fraction bar. Now, what am I multiplying the first fraction by? Five, thank you. I'm multiplying the first fraction by five. So if you want, you can put times five here. And one times five is five. The second fraction I'm multiplying by what? Two. So that's a negative six. And what's five minus six? x equals negative 1 over 10. All right? Is everybody okay with that? Any issues? All right, I'm pretty happy. Again, 34, just to make sure you heard me. Multiply by the, and what is the reciprocal? 5 thirds, so I'm gonna put a 5 over three here. These guys cancel. X equals, is it gonna be negative or positive? Negative. Does anything cancel? No, final answer. Negative 35 over nine. Any issues with that? Any issues? It's nice that it was already a fraction over there instead of a whole number. Say that again. I just said it's nice that it was already a fraction on the right side instead of a whole number that you had to yes. convert. All right, here we go. 36. Now, again, 
I'm looking at this noticing I can just, hey, I'm just gonna move the negative three over. When I move the negative three, it becomes a positive three. So negative six equals two X. Everybody agree with that? And now divide both sides by two, X equals negative three. Anybody have any issues? I, I do. Why couldn't you just plus three? That's what I did, Jack. Negative nine plus three is what? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I was, okay. Right? Yeah, it just looked a little bit weird. That's totally okay. All right, here we go. Now I did a decimal just to make sure. First, we have to add that. Add 1.5 to both sides. Yep. All right, now the question is again, do I add them or subtract them? So 3x is equal to negative 1.2. Thank you very much. And then we divide by 3. Divide by 3. Thank you. So x is equal to negative. And if you want, you can say 0 0.4. Oh. Makes no difference. All right, how are we doing? Everybody okay? Any issues? Yes, ma'am. Good for you. Thank you. Loud and proud, I can. Yes. Point. Oh, okay. So look, I'm, I'm just doing 1.2 divided by 3, right? So again, remember, in the division, 3 just goes into 12 four times. But you have to remember the decimal goes straight up, right? So again, if you're looking at this through this, the decimal would go straight up. Does that make sense to you? Does everyone remember that? Okay, good. All right, again, remember, I know some of you, it's been a while since we had to do dividing decimals. So if you forgot something, it's not a big deal. Speak up so I can help you. Good job. All right, now you know for the test. All right, here we go. 39, uh-oh, or I'm sorry, 40. Everybody should be able to look at that and say something's a little wrong here. Is it possible for 2x to equal itself minus eight. No, it's not possible. So this is no solution. There is no solution for this problem. 2x will never be 2x minus eight. Do you may have any questions with that? Anybody have any questions? Nobody? What? then there would be a solution because it's not exactly the same. Okay. All right, let's take a look now. 42. All right. Now, what can I do on this problem? Yeah, we can distribute. Or we could divide by four. Right now, look, I'm going to show that step. I like dividing by four if I notice over here it's divisible by four because it just makes the problem easier, that's all. So now 3x minus nine equals eight. negative eight. Now I can add nine to both sides. So 3x equals one. Which means that x equals just one. Which means x equals, no, not three, not one, not point three three. Even though I know what you mean, one third is point three repeating, right? But we don't write that, all right? In math, the more advanced, you leave things as fractions. X equals one third. Anybody have any issues? Everybody good? 
All right, here we go. Let's look at the next one now. Uh-oh, a bunch of ugly fractions here. So let's see what we can do. So come on now, three times one-sixth. What is three times one-sixth? One-half. One-half x. Then I distribute the three to the negative six. What is that? What? Negative 18 equals. Now I'm distributing the two ninths. Now try to remember what I said. It's better to divide first. What is nine divided by nine? One times two, two. So this would be a two X minus what's 36 divided by nine? Four times two, eight. There we have it. All right, so that is our equation. Now again, this one's a little bit trickier because now, Jack, there are variables on both sides. Yep. So to me, personally, I want to try to keep the variable positive, so I'm going to throw one half over here, and I'm going to move the negative eight over here. And when I do that, I'm going to put a plus eight, plus eight, and then I'm going to do minus one half X, minus one half X. Now, once again, you should be able to look at that and say, well, the negative eight and the positive eight cancel out, the one half and the negative one half cancel out. And so now negative 18 plus eight, negative 10. Okay, now just for us over here, two minus one half. Remember two is two over what? One. So the common denominator is what? Two. So what do I multiply the first fraction by? Two. Does the second fraction change? No, so technically it's just four minus one. And of course, four minus one is, so we have negative 10 equals three over two X. And now I need the reciprocal, all right? So what is the reciprocal? So I'm gonna come over here and just put two thirds that would cross out. So X is equal to, can 10 and three reduce? No, negative 20 over three, negative 20 over three. And again, I'm just saying, I feel like you should give yourself a little check if you know what we're doing, all right? You had to go back and make a correction you weren't sure about something, you should make yourself a note at that point. Anybody have any issues? All right, guys, I feel like we're doing all right. Let's look at 46. All right, now definitely on 46, I wanna go ahead and distribute the five. So come on now, everybody distribute the five. So that becomes 5x minus 10 plus 10 equals negative 3x minus 18. Anybody have any complaints about that? Okay, now you should be looking over here saying what's true here. Yeah, they already cancel out, which is nice. So now I have 5x equals negative 3x minus 18. Now what do I do? Add 3x, that is correct. 5x plus 3x is? 8x equals negative 18. And then we divide by eight. Now eight does not go into 18 evenly. 
So we just reduce the fraction. Thank you. Negative nine fourths. Just to make sure you know we divided by two, divided by two, just to make sure. Good. I feel like wizard math. What's that? This is like wizard math. I feel like a genius. I don't know how to do this. You should. All right, you should. It's really you should feel like a genius, Jack. Yeah. You you listen, it's really important. It's really important. If you can do this, honestly, I can teach you all the advanced stuff. All right, but most kids struggle with the equations. That's why I'm trying to tell you, be real careful. Make sure you understand what I'm saying. All right, we got a couple more to go, guys. Come on now. 48. All right, here we go. Take 30 seconds. All right, everybody take 30 seconds. Let's see if you can do it. All right, chop, chop, quickly, quickly. Let's see if I've taught you anything. Not combine the six and the two. What I was telling you, the mistake is made to two being negative. Negative and the fact is negative. Negative six is not positive. No, you're not. Negative times the positive is what? No. Two times negative two. That's what it was taking away. You okay, man? All right, here we go. Let's see what you did, guys. All right, now again, I cannot emphasize, I try to tell kids all the time, in order for me to be good at math, I had to remember my little careless things, my mistakes that I would make. And I know distributing a negative is a big mistake for kids. So when you see a negative distributing, make yourself a note, be careful. All right, so here we go. 6x minus 2x minus... 6 equals 4x. All right, you had to see that it was a minus 6. All right, now if we combine terms, 6x minus 2x today is 4x. 4x. Thank you. 4x minus 6 equals 4x. Is that a problem? Yes, no. it is a problem. There is no way 4x minus 6 is ever going to equal 4x. A number minus 6 can't equal itself. So that's why you put no solution and give yourself a check if you understood that completely, if you didn't make a mistake. All right. But again, the mistake is made when you are distributing a negative. When you're distributing a negative. All right. So with that being said, all right, let's push it up and see what we got next. All right, 50, here we go. I got two more to go. I'm gonna walk around the room here for another 30 seconds. I want everybody to give it a good shot. All right, and be real careful.
All right, let's look at your paper. See if you have something similar to what I have. All right, first thing is we're going to distribute the two. All right, so when we distribute the two, 4x minus 2 minus 7 equals 3x minus 21 plus 2x. So if you have that step, you're in good shape. I know no one in here would forget to multiply 3 times 7, right? So make sure you're distributing properly. We don't mention names, CC. You don't have to worry about it, all right? <laughs> now, we combine terms. That's easier. So I'm going to highlight negative 2 and negative 7 is what? Negative 9. Thank you. Negative 9. Now I'm looking over here. Equals. Over here, I'm and looking over at... Over there, it's 5x. There we go. 5x minus 21. Now, hopefully you realize it's much easier to throw the 4x on the right side because that'll be just 1x and we'll be done. All right, so let's take a look. I'm now going to subtract 4x. Subtract 4x. Then I'm going to add 21. Add 21. Yes, Mr. Greep. So on the first parentheses, yes. where did the 2 go? 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 1 is 2. And then on the other parentheses, you can make You with me now, right? All right, so draw your line underneath it. And let's see. 12 equals x. So we just kind of rewrite that. x equals 12. If you've got that right, really, you're in pretty good shape. That's what I thought. All right. Wizardry is what we call that, Jack. Awesome. All right, here we go. All right, give you 30 seconds on this fraction now. Come on. All right, one more fraction and then we're done. Let's go, see if you can do it all by yourself. All right, don't forget your common denominator, moving things. already had a couple people multiplying by the reciprocal straight off the bat. You're not multiplying by the reciprocal first. You have to combine the fractions first. No reciprocals first. No, no, no. I'm subtracting three-fifths x. Subtracting three-fifths x. Adding five. Adding five. That should be step one. We are not multiplying by the reciprocal until the variable is isolated. You first have to group the x's together and group the numbers together. All right, now why is that essential? These cancel, these cancel. Now you have it isolated. Eight plus five today is 13. Now I'm doing a variable with a fraction. What is the common denominator? So everybody should be writing 15. Now for me, the first fraction I just multiplied by what? Five. Multiplied by five. The second fraction I multiplied by three. 
Two times five today is 10 fifteenths minus what? Nine fifteenths left me with what? One fifteenth X equals 13. Am I good? Okay, so now. X, now we flip. Yeah, now you're just multiplying both sides by 15. All right. And of course, 13 times 15, I believe, is 195. Is that right? Yeah. Well, I wouldn't do it a way different way. Did you subtract two thirds? Oh, I did like a switch to five and two thirds from where they were. Flip them. And I just got 13 and then did the fraction. Exactly. Well, this, I mean, when you subtract to the fractions, you should be able to show me that. Yeah, I did. I got that. Okay. But on your paper, do you have 1 15th X? Yeah. All right. Then we did it correctly. All right. But that should be the process right there, guys. That should be the process. All right. Lots of practice. Okay. So now, listen, I'm going to end the video for today. I'll post it. Those are all of the worked out solutions. Your job now is to go back and do the what? Go back and do the odds. And then tomorrow I'm going to take a look at your work, all right, before I assign the next uh, little assignment. All right, so you might have any questions about what we're supposed to be doing. All right, so thanks again, guys. I, I know I spoke a lot today, but I just felt it was important that I make sure everybody's understanding perfectly. All right, so please work on the other half and I will take a look at your work tomorrow. All right, does anybody have any questions? My online peeps, you all good? Yes, yep. indeed. All right. Yes, sir. Since you guys are all good, I'm going to go ahead and close this out, and I will see you guys tomorrow, okay? I appreciate you guys are doing Okie dokie. Work for me. All right, and I appreciate it very much. Take care, guys. Goodbye, Mr. Stroke. Take care, Jack.